Welcoming Eric Trump going on the record with us tonight. So thank you for being here. Good to be with you, Kimberly, as always. Yeah, well, a lot to discuss because your father really has been driving the news as usual, especially the last couple of days with a bold move going to Mexico to sit down with the president, Peña Nieto. So do you think this uh, meeting was a good idea politically, and how do you think it played out for your father? Well, I think it's amazing. You know, Hillary Clinton saying they're doing $36,000 fundraisers, and my father's going down to meet with other world leaders. And both Mexico and the United States acknowledge that there's real problem, right? We need this wall. We have drugs coming this way. They have guns going that way. I mean, we need this wall. We need to make this country secure. We need to keep jobs in this country. I mean, we need to protect this country. We need to keep this country safe. If you look at median income in this country, it hasn't gone up in 15 years. And that's because people are coming over the border totally unchecked. And it's not fair to the Americans who have been here legally. And it's flooding the job market and making it more difficult for people who have abided by the laws to be able to come here and, you know, get the jobs that they want to support their families. Um, so it's oversaturation in the market. But also in this meeting, you saw that there was some common accord, like you said, as a former prosecutor, I know the problem of like drugs and gun running back and forth across the border. There really seemed to be an agreement, a mutual accord that this would be mutually beneficial, that Mexico is an ally and that really should partner together with them. Yeah, there's no question about it. I mean, we actually have the very same, you know, objectives as, as Mexico does. You know, we want to have legal immigration. We want to keep our country safe. We want to cut down on the cartels. We want to cut down on, on crime. We want to cut down on drugs. I mean, we want to give our citizens a better life. I mean, that's really what it's all about. My father's message is very pro-American. You know, it's America first. Take care of American citizens before you take care of others. And the sad thing is there's a, you know, list and there's a lot of people trying to come into this country legally. And then mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who are coming into this country illegally. And it's not fair that we put the people who are breaking laws and coming in illegally first. And so my father's message is very concise. It's very, very simple. We have mm -hmm. to know who's in this country and we have to provide safety and jobs for this country. And building that wall will do both things. Okay. Now, there's also been some people, uh, critics, saying they're conflicting statements coming from your father and the Mexican president about what was exactly discussed in the meeting and also as it relates to the wall. What can you tell us? Yeah, I don't think there was any conflicting statements. I mean, it's very clear they didn't talk about the price of the wall or who's going to pay for the wall. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's not what two people should. Mm -hmm. You have to build a relationship first. And I give my father a lot of credit for going down there. I mean, that's a tough thing to do, right? To go down there and to meet with somebody like this and to start that relationship. And I think that really says a lot about his leadership style. Was it proper for him to go in there and say, you know, listen, Mr. President, you are going to immediately pay for the wall. I mean, I think the president of Mexico knows my father's stance on this. He's been talking about it for the last, you know, 14 months. But, you know, I think they got along really, really well. And I think the first step Step was accomplished and I think it was accomplished really well and I think he showed true leadership and I think that will come in the months you know and months and years to follow. Now your father you know afterwards obviously spoke and gave an immigration speech as well and I'm um, speaking to your father even right after that he met with the Mexican president I mean what did he tell you you know personally about how he thought it went and his relationship with the president? Well, I thought it was a great meeting I mean he thought it was a great meeting in fact at the press conference he goes you know it's the beginning of a great friendship and it's nice now a lot of the leftist media won't spin it that way they'll try and find something to try and create division, and that's very, very sad. I wish people showed more leadership. Again, Hillary's doing, you know, huge fundraisers, $36,000 a plate fundraisers, mm -hmm. and my father's going down to Louisiana, which is underwater, right. and helping the victims down there. He's going to Mexico to meet with the president. You know, while our president is, is playing golf in, in Martha's Vineyard, it's just, it's a different form of leadership. We need people who are going to work hard, who have the energy, who, who have the willingness to do these things, because our government has not served the American people well. Uh, and we need to change that. We're going in so many of the wrong directions, mm -hmm. and we need to change that very, very quickly. Eric, you talk about uh, people working hard and those that have, you know, worked hard in this country. This is a country that is based and founded, you know, on immigrants, on hardworking families that have come here to try and make a better life for themselves and for their families. There are those that are critical of your father to say, you know, you can't just do a mass deportation and kick out people and families that have been here. Um, what is your father's, you know, understanding and sense of appreciation for that to balance it out while still keeping a focus on deporting criminal illegals that have violated the laws. Listen, I think I think that's exactly it. Let's get rid of the criminals out of this country and let's make sure other people that we don't know about aren't coming into the country. But you look at our jobs report. It just came out today, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, second quarter, we had 1.1% growth. I mean, think about that. 1.1% growth. We had 150,000 jobs to our labor force. That's mm -hmm. Uh, j just a dismal. I mean, there's it's it's horrible. It's horrible, horrible numbers. There's a hundred million people in this country out of the workforce, right? I mean, the jobs are no longer here. They've gone to Mexico. They've gone overseas. You look at great American companies, some of the best. 
Ford. I mean, think about Ford mm -hmm. leaving America to go down to Mexico. You look at Nabisco, makers of Oreo. Again, leaving America to go down to Mexico. Uh, Carrier Air Conditioners, mm -hmm. one of the biggest air conditioning companies. Again, leaves America, goes down to Mexico. They build the same products. They put it right across the border, sell it back to us. The only difference is now we have tens and tens of thousands of employees, you know, American citizens all over our nation. Right that don't have a job, and it, it's horrible. We have to take care of American citizens first. All right, so and let's go back a second and talking about the deportation, and I have a little bit of sound that I want you to listen to and have you react. We are going to end catch and release. We catch up, oh, go ahead. We catch up, go ahead. Under my administration, anyone who illegally crosses the border will be detained until they are removed out of our country and back to the country from which they came. Okay, there's people that have said your father has, um, you know, made conflicting statements or is he softening or pivoting on immigration? As a former prosecutor, having worked at the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office and San Francisco DA's office, where, of course, that horrible, the Kate Steinle murder happened, I understand what he's talking about because it's a revolving door and you see people that are criminal recidivists coming back and forth, in and out of the system, crossing the border repeatedly. I mean, ICE is there to do the job to deport, but the system as we have it isn't working because people aren't even enforcing the laws. ICE is handcuffed. I mean, it's just that simple. They're handcuffed. They're not allowed to do their job. And that's so, so sad because they're amazing men and women, you know, who, who do exactly that. Border Patrol, our, our law enforcement, amazing, amazing people. I'm a civilian in this whole process, right? Mm -hmm. But the one thing I can tell you that has really moved me as I go around the country with my father is yeah. seeing some of those angel mothers. The other night, those, you know, seven yeah. or eight women brought, you know, literally tears to my eyes when you see them. They've lost their kids, their daughters, their sons in the hands of illegal immigrants. So many of them, you mentioned Kate Steinle before, mm -hmm. he had been deported. He had been pushed out of the country five times. Right. I mean, it, it's amazing. He comes right back in. He gets thrown out again. He comes right back in. That emphasizes the exact reason why you need a wall. I mean, you want good people coming into this country. This country is made up of immigrants. My mom's an immigrant. She wasn't born in the United right. States. But you can't have criminals walking across the border five times only to murder a beautiful girl, mm -hmm. you know, who's trying to enjoy a beautiful Sunday or Take whatever it was. I mean, it is. Yeah, it's, it's a public it's safety horrible. mandate at this point in terms of being able to protect the people that are here and to, uh, you know, separate them out from the criminals that would do them harm. And it's a quality of life mandate. Mm -hmm. Wages are stagnant in this country. Our jobs are gone. People are unemployed. People are working three, four, and five jobs. People are 40 years old making the same amount of money as they were when they were 20 years old. It's not right. American citizens have to come first, and that's my father's message, America first. That's your father's message, and will he be able to get into the White House? Let's talk a little bit about some of the, uh, the polls and his ability to do some outreach and get into those crucial groups like Hispanic Americans. Well, Hispanic Americans, African Americans, he's speaking in Detroit tomorrow to an amazing group of, of African Americans, and it's sad. You look at so many of those communities, African American youth in inner cities, 60 percent unemployment. Their schools, so many of the schools, teachers have to walk through two metal detectors to get into an underfunded school and it's not serving the children well. So not only do they not have the jobs in those communities mm -hmm. because our industries have left this country, but they can't get the education because their school system is failing them. I mean, so it, it creates this awful void for that community and they're the communities that are hurt the worst. And by my father reaching out to them, I mean, I was so proud of him when he started reaching out to African-Americans because quite frankly, it's not a community the Republicans have ever done well reaching out to. And on the Democratic side, it's not a community that the Democrats have served well. And I think we're gonna do tremendous with them. And I think we're gonna do tremendous with the Latino community. And honestly, I'm really proud. I think it's very progressive of him to be putting the time and effort that he is into it. Right, and then lastly, I just want to touch on briefly just the swing states because, you know, in any uh, U.S. presidential election, it comes down to a few states yeah. that really matter and can deliver the White House. Your thoughts and strategy? Well, the Emerson poll came out today. We're plus five in, in Iowa, which is amazing. We're plus one in Virginia, which is incredible. L.A. Times, which is one of the largest polls out there, we're, we're plus one nationwide. Um, Hillary never thought this was going to happen. I can tell you this week she's not happy. I mean, she's come off two or three of the worst weeks of her campaign, and uh, She's not happy that going into you know, a great holiday weekend, you know, we're doing as well as we are and we have the trajectory that we do. And it's going to be uh, an exciting 60 days and we're going to work tirelessly to make this happen. But we've got to make America great again. I mean, it's just that simple. We've got to make America great again. And my father's an amazing man and he will do exactly that. All right. Fantastic. Always a pleasure to have yeah, you here. Great to be here. Thank you so Thank much. You. And tomorrow, Donald Trump heads to Detroit. Trump is trying to win over voters in the African-American community. A close Trump family friend who will be at that event here next.